both animal literature and human literature, and there's an extensive literature. You can find more about this on our website at ehtrust.org. We have, uh, we have uh, Science for Skeptics. We have information, FAQs, frequently asked questions about the National Toxicology Program. There's an extensive body of research on this at this time, and the problem is that people are in denial. People don't understand, for example, something like psoriasis can be triggered by electromagnetic fields, can be made worse by it. And I have had people who had psoriasis and insomnia, and when they unplug uh, and for a week, things cleared up. It was amazing. No, they're not, and they're not because they're being run right now by the cell phone industry. That's been the case under the Obama administration, and it certainly is the case now under the Trump administration, where the head of the FCC and several appointed officials come directly from the telecom industry. So there's Fox is in charge of the chicken coop, and that's been going on for more than a decade. Well, I've written a book about this called Disconnect, the Truth About Cell Phone Radiation, and the answer is it's complicated, and the complexity of the issue makes it very easy for people to want to trust. Well, after all, it's a very convenient device we have here. It must be useful. We should keep using it. And if there really was a problem, we'd have people dropping in the street. Well, guess what? The kinds of problems you have from cell phones, things like insomnia, uh, memory loss, uh, distraction, depression, uh, attention deficit disorder, uh, and, and, and then in terms of cancer, brain cancer, breast cancer, thyroid cancer, parotid gland malignancies, these have multiple causes, all of them. So being able to sort out the contribution of cell phones and other forms of wireless radiation is really problematic. Scientifically, it's a hard thing to do. And because it's complicated, we say, well, it's really, we can't do anything about it. We're all going to die anyhow, forget it. I'm telling you that the quality of our life and that of our children will be substantially improved if we limit these exposures now and understand how to change the hardware and the software. The technology has revolutionized our lives in many good ways. Response to emergency, improving business and trade, ability to communicate in quick time, real time, that's all great. But we are also paying a price because we're living as though we're constantly in a state of crisis and our bodies are constantly on high alert. And that's putting our adrenal glands at stress, that's stressing our bodies, and it's creating a stress-like culture where everything is going like this all the time, and we're not really getting the kind of rest that we need to restore ourselves and our souls. Well, we know that when people go to the Cleveland Clinic or go to infertility clinics all over the world, one of the first things doctors say to them is, where do you use your phone and get it out of your pocket? Because the data on that are rock solid. Cell phones can damage sperm quantity and quality. And that is why many experts around the world advise that men not carry phones on their body. And we tell nobody to carry a phone in their pocket. Because phones are tested off the body, as I'm going to show, and I have some original footage I can share with you from testing that's been done, independent laboratories will confirm. Cell phones kept in the pocket exceed the current test limits, which are 20 years old, relying on 30-year-old science. The Real Truth About Health Conference is an opportunity to reach an audience that's broader, because the only way we're going to address this problem is with an educated public that knows what they have the right to demand from companies and the government and the, for themselves. And the only way they're going to learn that is through the kinds of information that we can provide in a public forum such as this one.